On count six, the murder of Hannah Cornelius accused one, two, and three are guilty. The men accused of raping and murdering Hannah Cornelius have all been found guilty. Over the past year and a half, the pieces in Hannah's murder have fallen into place until the judge's hammer fell on the four men for ending Hannah's life. I wanted to give insight into the missing pieces in the case. Who were these men who robbed and kidnapped the students? And who exactly is this fifth suspect? Hopefully with this last information, combined with the sentencing of the culprits, the matter can be laid to rest for good and Hannah's family can begin to heal. Gerald Parsons and Vernon Vitboy don't the markings of the 28th Gang, a notorious prison gang operating out of the Western Cape prisons. They are known as being soldiers and killers. Graphic images of naked women and slogans like Thirsty for Blood are strewn across Geraldo's body. Similarly, Vernon has 28's gang tattoos. It is believed that one can only enter the numbers gangs, like the 28's, in prison after a complicated and often brutal initiation. These men would have all entered the gangs at some point during their lengthy criminal history. After seeing the previous convictions of the culprits, we now know that Vernon Vitboy began his extensive crime spree at the tender age of 13. So prolific was his crime spree that by the age of 15 he was convicted of more than 10 different charges of theft, housebreaking and robbery. Geraldo and Eben followed a similar pattern to Vitboy, be it less frequent, yet all the men had never been convicted of rape or murder before they took Hannah's life in May 2017. The men all grew up together. Vernon and Eben were friends and stayed near each other in Cludersville, while Geraldo grew up in Cryfontaine, but visited Cludersville regularly due to his girlfriend being from that area. Geraldo and Vernon became friends over the years. Many have asked if they showed remorse in the trial. Both Vernon and Geraldo have broken down, Vernon during his confession and Geraldo during his testimony. Eben, on the other hand, wrote a letter shortly after being arrested addressed to Hannah's parents. It details how sorry he was and that he was afraid of the other two men, which is why he couldn't help her. But in court, he denied writing this letter in honesty, saying the police forced him to write it as a means of confession. After they were found guilty of all counts, I asked the men if they were sorry for what they did. Gerald, do you want to say anything? What do you want to say? The fifth man is alleged to have taken part in some of the crimes, yet evidence is sketchy. Except for the culprits in this case, no one really knows who the fifth suspect is. We only know him as Kafirki, and police say they are unable to make any progress in the matter. We know for a fact that there were four men who robbed the two women later that morning after Hannah and Cheslin were disposed of. The witnesses in this case said the man was dark in complexion, which matches Vernon and Gerald's description of Kafirki. Vernon says the fifth man was with them when they raped and murdered Hannah. Geraldo says the man only joined them after the murder. But the only people that know for sure what role the fifth suspect played in the crimes are the men who have been sentenced to life behind bars by Judge Ali. On count six, the rape of Hannah Cornelius accused one is sentenced to life imprisonment. <laughs> After a successful crowdfunding campaign by Hannah's cousin, Chesin Marsh has now received close to 30,000 Rand and will be receiving a hearing aid due to the damage left behind from the men's onslaught. Some of the money will also go to counseling and to his studies. What a type of men do that only my honors. I could not see a lot The Hannah Cornelius Foundation continued to work in underprivileged communities, most notably in Ocean View, a short distance from where Hannah grew up and spent her birthdays handing out gift packs to children in the area. Me and my son are not a family. 
We are survivors who live in the ruins of what was once a family. Me and her mother were immensely proud of raising a child for the new South Africa. A child without the baggage of our generation, with little interest in money, material things, with no prejudices regarding race, religion or social standing. A remarkable child on the cusp of becoming a remarkable woman.